Hello, everyone, and welcome to Migrate Your Oracle Databases and SQL Server Databases at Scale. My name is Celia Antonio. I'm a database engineer here at Google, and I specialize in migrating databases. So let's jump into the agenda. And the first thing that I want to talk about is really about our database migration framework. And then I want to jump into a customer use case that leverages our database migration framework. So let's start. First, how do we tackle database migrations? We do so by bringing three things to the table. The first thing is that we, we have a developed a best practices migration framework. We've done many migrations from large scale migrations to smaller scale migrations. And through that process, we've created a framework that leverages our best practices. Secondly, it's all about automation. We have a lot of tooling that we bring to the table as well. And that tooling automates a lot of the tasks that you'll see throughout your migration journey. This is important because we want to really be able to accelerate migrations because typically customers have many databases that they want to migrate at once. And three, we bring expertise to the table. We have deep expertise in Oracle databases, SQL Server databases, and GCP databases. So I'm going to walk you through what our migration framework is step by step. And then what I'm going to do is dive into each of these sections in a little, a little deeper. The first thing that we start off with is what we call an assessment. Here is where we come in and we take a look at your whole database estate. And what we're looking to do is understand two things about your databases. We want to understand the complexity of these databases. We want to be able to determine if databases are more complex or less complex to migrate. And the second thing that we look at is what is the database characteristics or the workload characteristics of these databases? We want to understand the performance characteristics so that we can recommend the best target going forward. We also want to take a look at your applications as well. We want to assess the complexity level. Migrating a database is not just focused on the database side. We also have to take a look at the applications because as you know, it's not as simple as changing the connection to a new database engine. There's likely going to be some complexity that we need to evaluate. After this assessment, the next item that we think about is planning. And what we mean by here is that we look at the scope of the databases that we analyze and we create what we call migration waves. Now I'm going to dive into that topic a little bit more in a couple of minutes. But this allows us to also plan the tooling uh, that we're going to be using for our migration journey. Once we have all the planning underway, this is when the real work begins. And that real work starts with schema my, a conversion and database conversion as well. So our Oracle databases, our SQL Server databases, they have lots of objects in them. A lot of them have proprietary code, as you know. If we're talking about an Oracle database, we're talking about PL SQL code. If we're talking about a SQL Server database, then we have T SQL code that we have to deal with. And if we're thinking about migrating these databases to a Postgres like database, even though there's compatibility between the two, there's syntax dialects that we're going to have to deal with. So the good news here is that we have tooling in place that allows us to do these conversions in an automated fashion. So I'm going to identify what those tools look like in a little bit. After we think about converting the schema and the code of our databases, then we have to move the data. And there's, again, multiple ways I can move the data. It's going to depend really on your requirements. Uh, we can have a one-time load if you tolerate downtime, but if you don't tolerate downtime, there's real-time replication that we can enable as well. After the data is moved, we definitely want to validate that the data is in the location as expected. Again, we have some tooling here that we can explore to do those validation work for me. Now, after the data is migrated, the other thing that I want to think about as well is the application. As I mentioned earlier, there's going to be some application complexity and some changes I'm going to have to make. Specifically, you're probably going to have some embedded SQL in your application that we're going to need to convert. Again, in this particular case, we have tooling that we can bring to the table that's going to help accelerate that. And lastly, we're going to need to think about testing and optimizing. Now that we have the database converted, the code converted, the application up to date, we need to make sure that, that it is functioning as expected and the performance is what we expect as well. 
So let me take a step back now and dive a little deeper into these specific topics. And I want to start off with the assessment piece. So earlier I said the assessment piece is quite important for us because it allows us to really understand the complexity of these databases. So the way that we approach this is that we collect data from your databases and this data really allows us to understand the complexity of that database. In fact, we're able through this assessment to identify first mover candidate databases because those would be the databases that would be less complex. We're also able to determine the exact level of effort in hours that it would take to actually migrate these databases. So let me give you a sample of what that would look like. Let's take a look at the compatibility metrics. The compatibility metrics lists every single database that you have. So here we have a customer example where each bar represents a database. And what you see here is that we have it color coded into three buckets. The green bucket, which represents automated, the yellow bucket, which represents partially automated, and the red bucket, which represents refactor. So let me explain a little more what that means. So basically what we're doing is we're looking at an object and let's pick an Oracle database. So let, we're looking at an object in Oracle database and we're looking to see if there's a compatible equivalent of that object in Postgres. And if our tool can convert it automatically, we will tag it as, red, as, as green. And if we need to make adjustments to that tool, meaning that we can convert it, but there's still a little bit of work that we need to do, then we tag it as partially automated. And if there is not a compatible equivalent of that object, and I actually have to recreate it, we call that a refactor and it's tagged as red. So for this particular customer example, the good news here is that a lot of the objects that we find in these databases can be automatically converted with our tooling. So good news there. One of the things that this visualization does not show us is the level of effort and hours that it would actually take to migrate these databases. That is coming up in the next visualization. So following along in the same example, here you're seeing a bar that represents each of the databases in this customer environment. You'll notice that the first database has a value of 15 and the last database on this list has a value of 507. The 15 represents the hours of effort that it would take to actually modernize this database. So we could easily tell from this visualization which databases are less complex and which databases are more complex. And we can also tell exactly what is the level of effort from an hour perspective if I were to take this database and migrate it using our tooling. So after our assessment process, we go into our planning mode. In the planning mode, what we're looking for is at the whole estate of all the databases that we collected information for. And what we're looking to do is take that whole estate and break it up into smaller sections so that it is more manageable. And so what do I mean by that? Let's say you have 100 databases or we analyze 100 databases. We're not going to be migrating 100 databases in one sequence. So what, we'll do, what we're going to do instead is take these 100 databases and break them up into smaller subsets. The first subset can contain maybe 10 or 12 databases, and we'll call that wave one. The next subset, which is wave two, can contain another X amount of databases and wave three X amount of databases. I think you get the point. The idea here is that the first wave of databases, we want to execute first, in order to develop learnings so that we can use those learnings for the next iteration. And when I go to the next iteration, which is the second wave of databases, I will go ahead and execute that. There's going to be more learnings. I'm going to apply them to the next iteration. And as I kind of move from iteration or wave to wave, we end up being faster and better as we move through these migrations. This also allows me to create a repeatable process. Um, along the way. Now, you may be thinking that for the first wave of databases that I'm going to start with the most complex, but that is actually not what we recommend. We recommend starting with the least complex databases because your first wave is kind of when you're getting your feet wet. You're learning the tools and the process, and it's the first time that these things are being exposed. So starting with a lower complex databases really permits you to kind of get those your feet wet and puts you in, in, in a good position to derive learning so that you can apply them to the next wave. Then we jump right into what we call the schema and code conversion. 
Now we do have a number of tools here that we can use. We have our own first party tool, which we call database migration service. You'll see it denoted as DMS, but we also have three par third party tools, which, help, which we can leverage as well. And the reason that we have multiple tools available to our customers is because not one tool fits every single use case. So depending on your use case um, and your specific requirements, we may decide to choose one tool over another. But for the purposes of this conversation, I'm going to really focus on our first party tool, which is database migration service. Now, one of the things that we've noticed throughout the years is that database conversion has become a lot easier. And the reason why is because the tooling that does the code and the schema conversion has become better and better. And with the addition of Gemini and now the ability to use AI to do code conversion, it's gotten even better and more automated. So what I want to do is show you a little demo of our database migration service and show you the journey of the migration, as well as how we are thinking about using Gemini to really accelerate this. Now, before I show you the demo, I just kind of want to set the context for what you're going to see. So what you're going to see is the DMS interface. And in this interface, we, will, we, will, we, will, we had already gone through a few steps, which means we had already connected to the source and target. We've already identified the objects that we were going to migrate. So you're going to see two panes. One is going to be the Oracle code. And then the, the other pane, which is on the right-hand side, will be the new Postgres code. Now, that code will not will have an error in it, meaning that our DMS tool was not able to actually convert all of it. We're going to use Gemini to provide a recommendation in terms of how do I correct this tool to make it executable. So this is the demo that we're going to look at. Let's look at it now. Okay, so I have my Oracle code on the left-hand side and my Postgres code on the right-hand side. I'm asking Gemini, how do I fix this code? It goes in and it analyzes the code. And then what it does is it provides a recommendation on how I fix this particular block of code. Now, in this particular example, we're using a reference cursor. For those of you that are familiar with that, this is an Oracle concept um, that is not necessarily easy to convert. But with Gemini, we're able to surface the error and also provide a recommendation on what that new code should look like. Now, this new addition that we're bringing into DMS is going to really help us accelerate migrations. Because if you're not very familiar with Postgres frame, framework or Postgres coding, we will use Gemini to assist us by providing recommendations. Okay. So now we've done some schema and code conversion. Earlier, I said that after we do the schema and code conversion, we think of moving the data as well. And the good news here is that if you are using DMS to do your database migration, you can continue with the same tool to actually move the data as well. DMS does provide you the ability to do real-time replication. Um, and so therefore, you can use it for that, uh, for the data movement as well. Of course, if DMS does not fit your specific requirements, we do have a third-party tool called Stream that we can also leverage. Once the database and the data is migrated, then we cannot forget about the application side. And earlier I mentioned that we also have an ability to automate some of that conversion. And so we again have um, a number of tools that we can use to help with this process. And we will typically choose the tool that meets your specific requirements and your application code base. But in essence, what we're doing here with our tooling is that we're scanning your database repository and what, sorry, your application repository. And what we're doing is identifying the embedded SQL that you have in your application repository. And then converting that embedded SQL from Oracle dialect into Postgres dialect. Um, and that is how we um, accelerate your application conversion process. After your application is converted and you're connected to your new database, your Postgres-like database, then the last item here is testing and optimization. In this particular phase, we look at validating the data. Again, there's some tooling here that can help. And we also look at doing application and functional testing. 
let's look at a customer use case that kind of leverages some of these concepts that we talked about. I'd like to introduce to you TELUS. They are a Canadian telecommunications company, and they offer a number of services, which include mobile, internet, television, security. And so, like all of you, they have a lot, a lot of databases. They have Oracle databases, they have SQL Server databases, and they've decided that they would like to move those Oracle databases and those SQL, SQL Server databases into a Postgres-like database. And so, how did we approach this? The first thing that we did is we ran an assessment. So we used our DMA tool and we assessed over a thousand databases. And we categorized these databases by level of effort in terms of migration. So if you recall earlier, we're able to deduce which databases are more complex and which databases are least complex. And we created or defined what is called migration waves for them. Once we've defined the first migration wave, then what we did is we went ahead and executed that first wave of databases. And we migrated the databases and the applications as well. This allowed us, allowed us to create a blueprint, which they now leverage for all of their other migrations or the next waves of migrations that they're going to do. This also allowed us to develop some learnings along the way. So as we execute each of the waves, we have new learnings that we incorporate. And what ends up happening is that as you move from wave to wave, you just get better and better and faster at executing those migrations. This year, the plan for them is to migrate about 60 Oracle databases and their respective applications. Thank you so much for joining us. And that concludes our talk.